all right guys what's going on justin from 79th productions and today we're going to be working on the suburban now i had someone come take a look at it and it is the transmission i'm gonna need to rebuild the transmission so we're gonna go ahead and uh pull that the transmission off i got a buddy of mine coming to help me today and uh once he gets here we're gonna get started and we're gonna try to get this thing off he can't stay too long so try to get as far as we can and then uh i'm on my own from there so yeah we're gonna get to it pretty soon we got the suburban up and i got billy over here billy's gonna be helping me today well billy's been doing a lot of the work already but uh we're gonna start pulling this transmission off so i could take it to the uh rebuild shop hey guys so billy just got the uh exhaust hanging down loosen those bolts we got everything loosened up, the uh, transmission cross member. So right now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get the jack to support the transmission so we could go ahead and pull all of this stuff off. Uh, I think we have two. There you go. Uh, uh, you see the top thing right here? Uh-huh. Uh, Alright All right, guys, so we're going to loosen this pan now, that way uh, we can start letting the fluid out. So just a couple of them. Let me loose this one too a little bit. Alright. Oh. Woo! See? Good thing I put that one back guys so once he takes these bolts off and we get the pan off we could just dump all that fluid out and then we could put the pan back on that way we can uh that way we could place the transmission jack under the pan see now we're getting all this fluid out i mean it kind of spilled out everywhere but we have this tarp on the ground so it's pretty good we really didn't make a mess. Wiped it up and uh, we're getting there with this uh, transmission removal. All right guys, so we uh, got this fluid out and we're getting ready to, in the process of dropping the pan, but just wanted to show you this guys, this transmission fluid is just completely black. Now, there was shavings in the bottom of the pan but not shavings but a little bit of metal but yeah we could see why this thing uh why the tranny started acting up so we got the other jack out and we got the transmission jack under it is super hard to record this but uh i've been pulling stuff out i've been pulling stuff out little by little i've taken the uh gear selector off and uh we're about to move up front and take the uh, torque converter bolts off and uh, starter off. So we're doing this little by little. We removed the starter and we had to remove the starter to access the torque converter bolts. And what we're doing now, we're spinning the crank. That way, that way you can see, Billy, see if it's going up enough. Let me see. So no, put your finger on it, Billy, so they can see. Yeah, right here. All right, Billy got his finger on the bolt, and we're gonna move it up. A little bit more. A little more. Yeah. We're rotating okay, it. Okay, good. Good? Yeah. And go. now, Billy's got the uh, extension and the ratchet, and guys, these things are on there tough. They're on there tight, so you're gonna have to really get after them. He's using a... Uh, He's using the jack handle to kind of get some leverage on it. So. Remember, I'm holding the crank and he's gonna go ahead and try to break that loose. There we go, he just broke it loose. And now, 
he should be able to he should be able to get it by hand. There we go. And there's three of those torque converter bolts. And once we get those loose, the torque converter will be uh, freed up from the flex plate. And we'll be good to go. We can remove the uh, transmission bolts. All right, guys, so I'm about to take the uh, transmission bolts off and this is how I'm going to uh, get it off. I got five extensions on here, a small one at the end with a little swivel and uh, that's gonna help the uh, socket position itself onto the bolt. Uh, this is the hardest part of the job, guys. All right, guys, so we got the uh, ratchet on and uh, that extension, we're up there. I already broke the bolt free and it's turning and we're just gonna we're just gonna take those off and let them drop down doing this with one hand so I'm gonna stop recording and uh, get that bolt off you can see it's turning and I'm super excited about that. Now we just gotta go ahead and get the other side off. We, we're here. Ah, there we go. It just broke free. And yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take that out and we're good to go. All right guys, so we broke the transmission free. Nothing's holding it on anymore. And now I just need to lower this. I don't know how I'm gonna record this, but I just need to lower this. And you can see it just, uh, it's moving freely. So I'm gonna slide it back a little bit and uh, drop it. guys so we got this thing down and I'm super excited about this this transmission that this transmission jack came in uh, handy and now I need to get it off this transmission jack but I think I need some help for this cuz this thing is pretty heavy all right guys so we got the transmission out and I am super excited about this this was not easy and yeah it, it was a it was a, a big job getting this thing out but i'm excited that it's out and uh we're gonna keep moving forward all right guys so while i had the uh transmission out i went ahead took the flex plate off changed the rear main sill i did this off uh camera because i kind of really need to get this done i really need to get this done i changed the oil galley uh plug and this thing was kind of hardened so I changed that I took it out to inspect it put a new one in it was only eight dollars so might as well have just put the new one in but yeah I changed the rear main sill this one I mean it wasn't leaking it was showing signs of like seepage towards the bottom but it didn't really have a leak but while it was out might as well put the new one so I did that all right guys so i got the transmission back in from the transmission shop and it was about a week turnaround and i'm just ready to go ahead and throw this thing in so we're gonna go ahead and put it in and let's get this thing running all right guys here we go i'm getting ready to put the transmission back in now guys i just went ahead and had this thing rebuilt just for peace of mind so 
It's got a new pump. Everything in it is brand new pretty much and uh, super excited about this. And we're gonna go ahead and get this thing back on here. All right guys, so we're here just lifting up the tranny. That's what it is, it just had to come up. I'm trying to get out of the way. Fixing that floor. More? <clears throat> you can come forward for more. Keep going? Yeah, you keep going. But now it's easy. Keep going? Yeah. Is it stuck on something? Yeah, you got to come forward. You got to come forward now. Come back. Now push it forward. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's looking close. I think that's it. Is that it? Uh-uh. Let it down more? Yeah. Transmission's got a twist. A little bit more. Better more? Uh-huh. I think that's it. Is that it? Feels like put a bolt in it. <laughs> All right, guys. So we got that tranny in now, and we are just going to put all of these transmission bolts. We're just gonna put all these back in and snug them down, and we'll come back and torque them up later. All right guys, so for these, I'm using this uh, this deep socket that I cut the tip off of and that's allowing me to get behind these body panels or the firewall. So it's a little snug, but we're good there. All right guys, so here we are. We're ready to put in the torque converter bolts and now that we got the transmission bolts on, we're gonna go ahead and put these on. I already put two of them in. Now guys, there's a uh, there's one that you need to start with that, let me see if I could position this camera better. But see, these are big circles. There's one that you need to start with that kind of got flat edges on it that's the one you should start with so the rest of them can seat let me try to guys it's really hard to do this with under here with one hand and and the camera but yeah we're gonna go ahead and try our best So we got that in now, we got the bolt in, and now we're gonna just go ahead and torque it down. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna torque it down off camera. Guys, it's, it's way too tight in here not having a lift to try to do this stuff. And I'm gassed out, I'm exhausted, and I stopped filming a lot of stuff, but yeah. Yeah, this <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's a big job and it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. All right guys, so got the new 
tranny lines. I'm going to install these before I start putting all the cross members and exhaust on. I'm just going to put them in place because it's going to be a lot easier. I'm going to do this off camera. There's no way I could show this to you on camera, but it was a lot of moving this line. I ended up actually just cutting to leave on the radiator because I am going to change the radiator as well and it was kind of hard to get to it so I just cut it just to make it quicker since I'm not using these lines but here we go guys uh, we are going to change the transmission lines and the radiator just to get all of that old clutch material or whatever burnt up the metal in the transmission out of those lines might as well replace them all while we're here and these were i think like 80 bucks so it's cheap insurance just to do this all right guys so we're getting ready to put the uh transmission cross member on and we're just gonna go ahead and slide these bolts through here and get this thing situated i gotta you gotta kind of pick it up and do both sides at the same time just like that it's a it's a real challenge to get this thing especially laying on the ground like this but we just got it in there yeah we just got it in there and I'm gonna have to uh, put this other bolt in and I'm basically going to just lift this up and try to slide it in from this side. Hopefully I could get that in. There we go. Got it. And whew, got it in and now we're just going to go ahead and uh, snug it down. Alright guys, so now that we got the uh, transmission cross member on, we could go ahead and uh, take the take the transmission jack out um come a long way and i'm super excited about this this thing's coming down pretty slow but yeah we got the uh cross member supporting the uh weight of the transmission and guys we're uh we're almost done i am very excited about this it's such a long process, but you save some money doing it yourself. But honestly, thinking back, I don't like doing this job by myself. So it's just one of those things. If you have the money, spend it. If you don't, do it yourself. Now that we got this cross member in, we're just gonna go ahead and tighten everything down all right guys so we got everything installed transmission transmission mount the exhaust got the drive shaft done now so i put new transmission lines i got them hanging in the front i am going to swap out the radiator that way there's zero risk of getting any of the old transmission fluid the medical part the metal particles that were in the radiator we won't get none of that in the transmission so everything will be brand new all right guys so we're getting ready to take the uh radiator out i already got the fan out and the lines out now i just got to take these two bolts out to pull this out but yeah i took all of this stuff off to uh get the radiator out i mean it seems like a lot to do this but it really wasn't that hard at all so it's just uh a bunch of little things and it's it's not time consuming but it's just knowing where everything goes back and knowing where everything's coming off and you know so i'm really just taking my time with this to get it right all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and pull this uh radiator out pretty easy it's just time consuming like i said
All right, guys, got the radiator out. Good thing I pulled it out. This thing looks filthy. Uh, gonna replace it. This was very easy to pull out. It was just a process and it's a little time consuming because I had to disconnect all of these hoses and take brackets off and take the fans off and take the uh, air box off. And I mean, it's easy. It's just time consuming because of all the because of all of the little things you got to do. But we got it off and uh, let's get the new one on. All right, guys. So we are going to put the uh, new radiator in and this thing is uh, pretty big. Same size as the other one. I didn't realize how big it was till after I pulled it out. But guys, it's super easy to put this thing back in. And you really can't put it on wrong. Yeah, it's super easy. Tighten this down now, and, and we're good. So, all right, guys. So we got the radiator on, and uh, I put everything back on. It's kind of getting dark, so I went ahead and uh, hurried up and did it. Uh, now I still have to hook up these transmission lines, but I'm gonna be putting them into the radiator and a cooler, so. I need to figure out how I'm gonna route those, which is why I did not put this uh, air box back on. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna wrap it up from, I'm gonna wrap it up here for today. And uh, tomorrow I'll finish the uh, cooler installation. We could fill the uh, cooling back up. We could fill the transmission up and this job should be done. All right, guys, so in order to put the transmission cooler on, we got to take the front bumper off and it's just going to be these uh, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, grill and the bumper up top and then some side bolts there that I've already taken out and the two bottom bolts. We're going to take these top bolts off and this thing should come off. Right, guys so we got the uh, front bumper off and getting ready to put these cooler lines now this line looks like it's supposed to come through this hole right here so I'm gonna have to take this off it's just a couple of uh, 10 millimeter screws bolts but we're gonna go ahead and take that off so we can uh, set that line through there all right guys so I could not get the second line in without taking this piece off and to do that I had to remove the headlights <sighs> yeah I mean this little tab right here was stuck behind the headlight and uh, now that I got that out this piece just comes and you've seen the uh, the line just drop so it's gonna be a lot easier to work with that you got the uh, I want to say they call this the auxiliary line. Now this piece is going to go behind the radiator and this piece is going to come up in the front into the cooler. And guys, these transmission lines are still so you can see why I was having a problem fitting that around that uh, bracket. So now I can just place this on and it's going to be super easy. All right, guys, so finally got these things in and I was fighting with it. I had this top line flipped around. I was using the other end up top, 
but this is how it actually goes in. So I just snapped that line in and when I was using the other end, it was just stuck on this hose and it just wouldn't work. And I was like, why is it not seating in this little clamp here? And you know, it wouldn't. Now this one that comes with the line is a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put that one on there, but I just kind of wanted to get those in. And now that I got the lines in place, I could go ahead and put the uh, new transmission cooler on. So here we go guys, we got the new transmission cooler sitting here. Came with uh, different screws, brackets, came with some uh, line, some holes, and uh, we are gonna go ahead and uh, put this thing on. Made some brackets, well I bent the brackets that came with it, and screwed it onto this bar. But I'm gonna put, I'm gonna hook it up to the factory lines, I'm gonna put the cooler in front of it and kind of position it out a little bit to where to where I think it would not hit or, or rub on anything. I mean I might have to I honestly might have to do this a couple of times and right now I'm just getting everything into position just to see and then I'm gonna run the lines behind it and come up into the top right here. So what we're doing, we'll trim them down a bit. Right now I'm just trying to get the uh, mounting uh, bracket situated. And guys, this is a lot of a lot of going through this and cutting, measuring. It takes time but we will get there all right guys so we got the lines hooked up and not the not exactly the way i wanted to run them i got the these lines running to the back to the factory lines and uh i mean it'll work I'm going to fill this thing up with fluid. I talked to the transmission guy and asked him if this was okay. And he said that it's perfectly fine because it's a pressurized system. So he said this should be good. Normally I see everybody have this flip the other way around. I got the uh, outlets there. But yeah, he said it's a pressurized system. So it should be fine. Now that we got that taken care of, we are just going to, I pulled the dipstick out and, uh, I'm going to add some uh, transmission fluid and uh, I need to put some coolant in it. I already put some coolant, but it's already went down. And uh, I mean, yeah, we're just going to fill this thing up with fluid. I want to say the transmission takes 12 quarts. Uh, might take a little bit more because of the uh, cooler, but we're going to put in... 11 quarts to start with we'll let it run warm up and we'll check the level and then uh we'll go from there all right guys so <clears throat> this is the second jug and this is eight quarts and we got another jug and we're gonna keep going we're gonna do about 10 11 quarts and we're gonna see where uh, where it is when we let this warm up all right guys so for coolant we are just uh, putting some uh, Dex coolant and we already put bottle of this we already put a gallon of this and uh, I mean it it's taking it all the way down I want to say that radiator is empty I'm probably gonna need probably gonna need like three or four of these this is number two but we're gonna fill it to it's where it needs to be now it's already showing that it's full but I haven't ran the engine yet, so 
I'm just uh, taking care of all the fluid now. So once I run the engine, I'm gonna have to let it heat up, let the thermostat open up, and and uh, let the uh, fluid circulate through, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get all the air bled out the system. All right, guys. So we got everything on here. I got the fluid filled up. I I got uh I got pretty much everything done. So what I'm gonna do right now, I already fired it up and checked the fluid levels. Everything's full. Now I'm just gonna. I haven't tried to put it in gear or drive it or anything. Now I'm. I'm going to take this thing off these ramps and I'm going to go for a test drive. Now, the transmission guy told me to come by his place because he said that he needs to program the transmission and he said it's going to drive funny in the meantime, but he said it'll be fine. It'll give the fluid time to circulate and go through the gears and everything. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then... I will take it straight to his house and he's going to tune it up for me and I will still need to get a tune because I'm going to delete the DOD, but he said bring it through and uh, he'll take care of that initial setup and I'm going to schedule, once I make sure everything's good, I'm going to schedule an appointment with the tuner and hopefully this thing is good you know i mean i'm sure there's gonna be some things that i gotta do but i'm excited about this guys this is uh it's gonna be good for me and my family as far as driving around the odyssey is great but it's just a little too small so having this suburban will be a nice uh it'll be a nice extra vehicle to have and we can drive around and be a little bit more comfortable so that's great all right guys so we are in here driving right now and we are driving super slow he said to uh before he hooks the computer up he said it's going to be shifting funny so he said take it real easy do not rush and um right now right now i'm driving to the uh i'm driving to his place and i'm just keeping this thing slow cruising i'm cruising i'm not in a rush uh i'm gonna probably keep it about yeah keep it under 30 miles per hour so now if he didn't tell me about the shifting and everything like that i would be super worried but i'm not worried at all because he told me about that and he said once i drive get the fluid through he puts the computer on it it's gonna be a lot better and even when i tune it and delete the dod and change the shift points in the tune he said it's gonna it's gonna be perfect then and he offers a 12 month year a, a year warranty so i'm super excited about that that's uh it's good to know i got a warranty so i'm just gonna keep driving paying attention to the gauges and uh once we get there i'll stop and uh i'll start recording there all right guys we're at uh cj's place and he's setting up the uh what is this exactly what you're gonna be doing a quick learn quick learn now is there anything i need to do once i do that or just drive it just drive it so what exactly does the quick learn do? Resets all the shift adapts, and shift memories and all that stuff. How long would I have to drive it for it to kind of learn? Cause you said it has to relearn, right? Yeah, probably 20 miles or so. 20 miles? Good stop and go traffic. All right guys, so he's uh, going to take a drive and see how everything's shifting and 
you still got the computer up. Uh, is there anything you're looking for? Or? I'm just watching the data. Just watching the data. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take it for a drive and how far do you think we're going? I'm a mile or two. Yeah, go for a little drive and see how this thing does. So far, on the way, it, it seemed fine, but I wasn't really, he said to keep it at low speed. Well, don't drive it too quick, so I was driving kind of slow, and uh, yeah, he's cruising now, so. All right, guys, so I've been driving this thing after he reset it for for about an hour and a half now and the trans temp hasn't went up past 140 degrees so i am um, i'm very happy with that he said that trans cooler is actually really good so yeah um <clears throat> guys this has been a big job. It's been a pretty big job, but I have to say now that it is done and I got this thing driving, it is pretty pretty rewarding. So, I mean, <clears throat> I'm happy and I'm not that much into it. I'm gonna keep driving this thing and um, We'll drive it another couple of days before I put out this video and we'll see how it goes. But the transmission is running very cool and the cooler is doing its job and everything is working. I don't see any leaks, so it looks like we're in good shape. All right, guys, so we are done with this transmission install. I've been driving it around now for a week and this thing is running great super excited about that guys i want to give a big shout out to cj i'll uh, link his information in the description he's the guy who rebuilt the transmission guys i'm excited about this i am into this suburban pretty cheap now i was looking around for transmission shops and guys the cheapest that i found to rebuild this was cj and uh, most guys wanted three to five grand and he was at the three grand range and I, I didn't have it. I messaged around, I messaged him, I'd say, I asked, I said, hey, uh, you know, would you be interested in any trading? And he said, it depends, what do you got? And I, uh, I had a, uh, LS engine that I had that I pulled out of my Denali that old Denali that I had and uh, he was like I could I'm definitely looking for a 6.0 and me and him you know started messaging back and forth and he said he can do the transmission for a thousand dollars and the LS engine so I only got a thousand dollars into the transmission now I didn't have anything into that LS engine but you know, I was gonna use it for another project, but this is way more important because this is for me to drive my family around, so I needed to get this done, and for me, that ended up working out great. So, right now, into this Suburban, between buying the cooler, the fluids, the lines, rebuilding the transmission, buying the Suburban, I got about 2,500 bucks into it and guys, this was a necessity for me. So I'm super excited about that. $2,500 into a 2010 Suburban and I got a rebuilt transmission on it. So I'm doing pretty good so far. Now in the future, I want to buy an engine on the side. There's nothing wrong with this engine, but I want to buy one and rebuild it and go through it because this one has 260,000 miles on it so I want to rebuild it go through it because this is going to be our family road trip vehicle so we're going to go on some long drives with this thing and 
that's what I that's what I bought it for you know so we can do that so but that's gonna be it guys don't know what I'm gonna do what else I'm gonna do to it in the future because it runs so good and it drives great I don't know if I want to turn this into a project but I don't know let me know what you guys like to see would you like to see some wheels go on it maybe lower it I don't know about lowering it but we could do some other stuff to it but let me know what you guys would see and uh leave a comment and uh we're gonna wrap this video up here guys that's it thank you for watching like comment subscribe follow me on in instagram and facebook at 79 productions and i'll catch you guys on the next one god bless you guys